So, this is chapter 6 of our book. It's the financial service providers. <clears throat> so, obviously, before the break there, we had a long extended break. I had just left you in, with instructions from our last class to revise the chapter on consumer rights and responsibilities to the consumer. Um, it is important that you put in the time and effort into revising those two topics. Um, obviously, we're not sure whether what time we're back to school or anything like that. Um, so we don't know anything about a summer exam yet. Um, but those two chapters are quite important going forward into second year. So those last two chapters that we had covered in class, and I had just said to you to revise for a test in two weeks, um, it is important that you spent the last couple of business classes going over those two chapters. Um, but now we're going to move on. We don't have much of the course left to cover. Left to cover. Um, because we had done a bit of saving before, so we had kind of like gotten ahead a small bit in terms of where we needed to be. Um, but we're going looking at this chapter on financial service providers, and then we'll go back and we'll look a bit at saving again. So we haven't got much more left in uh, first year business. Um, but we'll carry on. So our financial service provider, this is our chapter six. I have a PowerPoint here. I'm going to go through stuff in the PowerPoint. I'm also going to go through stuff in the book and the workbook because I'm going to give you a little bit of stuff to do in the workbook as well. Not too much this week because um, we've had a two week break and we'll just ease ourselves back into it. Um, so the first thing here I have on financial service provider. A financial service provider is an organization that offers money related services. <coughs> so even if you were to ignore the next part, what is a financial service provider? Somebody that an organization that offers money related services first thing you should think of is a bank banks are companies that offer money related services so reading this can get confusing sometimes we don't really know what they're talking about um, but we're basically thinking about people who are organizations who lend us money who accept our money um, that being a money related service so the main financial service providers in Ireland are commercial banks credit unions and on post so on post the post um, office essentially also um, offers you a savings account and you can to get small loans off on post but the main two that we would think of would be a commercial bank and a credit union so what's the difference a commercial bank and we, we're going to look at this now first the commercial bank the commercial banks are the typical banks that you see when you walk up and down the street um, in Killarney or, or anywhere really, um, AIB, Ulster Bank, Bank of Ireland, uh, banks like that. Um, a credit union is different, there's a credit union in most uh, towns in Ireland, there's one in Killarney too. Um, the credit union is a not-for-profit um, organisation compared to a bank, a bank is trying to make a bit of money. But as credit unions are generally owned by members um, and it, it doesn't have the same willingness to try to make profit so generally sometimes there can be kind of um, it can be more favorable for uh, somebody starting off saving to start off saving with a credit union if you have a small bit of money um, generally with larger sums of money we, we look at commercial banks um, so commercial banks a commercial bank is a financial institution serves individuals and businesses so it's a financial institution meaning more or less that it's a business that deals with finance and it's serving individuals and business means that basically any individual or a business can be a customer of a bank so anybody can be a customer for a bank you just walk in the door um, and obviously try to set up an account so examples of commercial banks operating in ireland are bank of ireland AIB, which is actually Allied Irish Bank, uh, Ulster Bank, Barclays, um, KBC, Permanent TSB. There is a long list of banks that are out there. Um, first couple here are more of the popular ones, especially Bank of Ireland, AIB, and Ulster Bank. Um, they would be the three most popular in Ireland anyway. Um, but basically, a uh, commercial bank is your normal bank that you see when you walk up down the street. Um, most people can open a bank account there you cannot open a bank account if you are um, under a certain age unless you do so with your parent um, as kind of a guide so um, generally obviously as you get older 
and you have a job, you have income coming in, um, the vast, vast, vast majority of people will then go and open up a bank account. Um, commercial banks offer their customers a wide range of financial services, including current accounts, deposit accounts, we're going to get to these in a second, um, saving and investment options, we looked at saving before, so basically just saving options, also investing options as well, we'll look at that. Payment facilities such as standing orders and direct debits, we'll get to them soon. Uh, borrowing options, credit cards, overdrafts and loan. So that'll kind of be the last part of our class. And then we'll look at foreign currency exchange and online banking another day. Um, so just to break these down one by one, that's just our list. Um, that's just our list of things that we will be covering in this chapter. And these are things that are offered by commercial banks. Um, the first thing that's offered, and more or less everybody would have um, this account once they join a bank, is you generally start with a current account. So a current account is a non-interest account that allows the account holder to withdraw money at any time. What is a current account? Well, if you had a job at the in the summer, if you had a job and you were a waitress in a hotel in Killarney, and you were receiving €100 Euro every week for working two or three days inside in that hotel um, generally the way most businesses offer is instead of handing you uh, envelopes of money or anything like that because it's messy trying to organize tax or things like that um, generally most companies will send you the money directly into your bank account it's the way the world works now there's generally very little exchanging of cash um, not many companies pay people through checks so the way generally most people get paid for their job, if they're working for somebody, um, is they get paid by having the money sent directly into their current account. So your current account is the first thing you have. Um, generally the money you get from working goes to your current account. And also your current account will have a card. I'm sure you've seen um, similar cards. We'll look at it in the next slide as well. Um, and with this card you can also pay transactions in a shop. You can go to an ATM. So a current, a current account offers you the ability to be able to save your money from working. So you're working and you have money coming in from your job as a waitress. Um, and that money goes straight into your current account. So you never see it. Every time you get paid, every Thursday in the summer you get paid. And the money goes straight into your current account. And then with that current account card, which we see here, it's a debit card. You can go and you can go into the cinema and you can pay for something by card. You can go online and pay for shopping by card. One thing, a current account is a non-interest account. So we looked at interest before when we looked at saving. We saw that there was simple interest and compound interest. And interest is a way for us to make additional money. When you have a certain amount saved in a bank and they offer you interest on the money you've saved, maybe 1%, you get an additional 1% on top of everything you own. We, we're not going to go into too much detail of that because we looked at it a bit with saving and we'll look at it again after we've done this chapter. Um, but having interest in your current account would be um, very, very positive. Um, it's something that obviously you'd like to have because interest will give you more money um, interest for your savings account um, but this does not have a um, interest added on to the current account so if you have a current account you can buy uh, online you can buy in shops uh, you can have your money come in from uh, your job to come straight into your uh, current account but you don't earn any interest so I would say that's the one big disadvantage with current accounts. They don't earn any interest. Um, it allows you to withdraw money at any time. How does it do that? Is the ATM, automated selling machine. The uh, machines you see the hole in the wall you see when you're walking down Killarney. Um, people put in their card, put in their pin, and they can withdraw money. So a current account is, is allows you to easily withdraw money. Um, so they are very... Um, they're very effective ways of uh, saving money through your job um, and spending money, but you don't earn any interest. So from a long-term savings perspective, 
they're not as advantageous. Current accounts. So when you have a current account, you have a debit card. This is a generic debit card. This is one that it looks like what it would look like. Um, a debit card allows an account holder to withdraw cash from an ATM or to transfer money electronically from their account. So this debit card here, there's a certain amount of numbers. There's 16 digits here. You have two additional numbers here showing the expiry date. In this case, it's quite small writing, but I can see it's 12-23, which means 12th month, which is December 23, which is 2023. Also at the back, there's three additional small numbers called CVC numbers. Um, and those those three numbers then are also kind of security codes. And if you're paying online, you'd need the three numbers at the back. So that's the, the main bit of information you see on a debit card. You have 16-digit number here. Obviously, it's a long number so that it's very difficult to remember anybody else's number. Uh, you have the expiry number, expiry date here, in this case 1223, which is the 12th month, December of 2023. And also the name, this is obviously a made up card, so it's Lee N card holder. Um, so the um, debit card allows an account holder to withdraw cash from an ATM. So with this card, you can go up to any ATM around the country. Um, or generally around the world as well um, and you can put in your card and you can put in your pin number which is a specific four digit number that will be given to you by your bank um, and then once you put in your pin number it basically lets the ATM know that yes I own this bank card and I'm here to take out money and then you can choose whether to take out 20 euro, 50 euro, 100 euro generally it's capped at 300 you can't go and take out all your money at once if you have more than 300 um, but this card basically allows you to quickly get um, uh, an amount of cash uh, from the ATM. Uh, you can also transfer money electronically from their account. <laughs> That's quite simple. Most of you may have seen that before. Transferring money electronically from your account could be something simple as paying money online electronically. You go into any kind of shop um, online. You go to... Um, new look have an online uh, section you go through their clothes you find something you want to buy and then you put in your car details you're electronically paying money from your account um, so that's what a transfer money electronically means uh, something you would have seen before <coughs> a check is a written instruction to the bank to pay an amount of money to the person named on the check these are not as popular now as they once were um, Usually you see checks now, and this is actually kind of uh, what I'm going to talk about. Usually you see checks now given to charities. So um, if we were to raise a certain amount of money, so for the people that are involved in the Couch to 5K uh, run last year before Christmas, um, they were raising money for Pieta House. So there was over a thousand euro, or close to a thousand euro, I think, that was raised. Um, and that money then would have gone on to a check. Uh, which was presented to Pieta House. For those as well that remember the Christmas market, that was also um, raising money for Pieta House as well, um, the chosen charity. And the money that was raised that day on the day of the Christmas market last year, um, that money was put uh, together and it was put onto a cheque. So somebody wrote the cheque out um, and the money was then sent to Pieta House. It's a piece of paper, but it has a bit of information on it about who the money is going to. Um, who the money is coming from um, and the amount of the money and a little bit of more information. We won't go into detail on that now um, but that's the second way you can spend money. So you have your um, <coughs> you have your debit card here where you can get money out from an ATM or transfer money online. You also have a check, a written instruction to the bank to pay an amount of money to the person named on the check. We'll get into that in more detail as we go on. Um, okay, <clears throat> a standing order. A standing order is an instruction to the bank to pay a fixed amount from an account at regular intervals. Sounds quite complicated. Standing order. Standing order is a lot uh, more relatable than you think. If anyone has a Spotify account, if anybody knows of somebody that has a Netflix account, anything like that, they're paid through standing orders. It's telling the bank to pay a fixed amount from the account at regular intervals. 
So, <clears throat> I myself have a Spotify, um, I'm subscribed to Spotify, I have my own Spotify account, and I have so for many years. Spotify costs you 10 euro. So, I have basically set up, um, day one when I set up my Spotify account first, I set up a transaction my bank and with Spotify, um, that I would pay 9.99, which is the cost of it, uh, for a Spotify monthly uh, premium subscription, I pay 9.99, 9 99 cent, um, from my bank account every month, so that I can have my Spotify or premium Spotify. So 9 euro 99 cent, so more or less 10 euro, leaves my bank account every single month, and then I'm in I'm entitled to having a premium Spotify account. Um, the standing order means that you're instructing the bank that this is going to happen regularly, at regular intervals. So every week, every month, every year. Um, you're setting up something with your bank that's basically saying every time one month passes, you're going to take nine euro and 99 cent from my bank account and you're going to give it to Spotify. So that's what a standing order is. And that's what they're most common for, the likes of uh, Netflix and Spotify and, and their subscription-based um, websites. More of them are becoming popular now. Disney Plus, Amazon Prime, um, in terms of uh, movie streaming websites and, and TV series. Um, they're becoming quite popular and it's something I'm presuming most of you would have seen before. Um, so that's how you pay them. You don't have to ring up Spotify every month. You don't have to ring up. Disney Plus, um, you don't have to contact Disney every month. Once you set it up the first day to pay 7 euro, 8 euro, 9 euro, 10 euro, to pay that amount once, your bank will automatically set it up to pay it at regular intervals, so every month or whenever the um, subscription is next due. A direct debit. A direct debit is an agreement between the bank account, between the bank and account holder that allows a variable amount to be taken from an account to pay a bill. So sending a direct debit to somebody is an agreement between the bank and the account holder, the account holder being you, the person who owns the account. So it's an agreement you make with the bank that allows you to pay a certain amount of money generally to pay a bill. The variable amount means it could be anything. So this here we saw the standing order. If I'm paying my Spotify every month, I pay nine euro ninety nine cent. It always stays the same. It's a fixed amount. The number is fixed. Whether it's a bill is not fixed. I have to pay my electricity bill every month. So when I'm paying my electricity bill to ESB every month, it's a variable amount. I don't know how much it's going to be in advance. I'm at home now, obviously, because we're all left the world stuck at home uh, with the quarantine. Um, so, because I'm at home more often, I'm using a little bit more electricity. Whereas if I was gone away somewhere, I mightn't be using electricity during the day. Now I am using electricity during the day. So chances are my electricity bill will actually have gone up for this past month. Whereas if I had gone away on holidays in July or something like that, my electricity bill would probably go down. It means that it's variable, it's not fixed, it's not the same. Um, so it changes every month, but a direct debit basically is an agreement that you pay a certain amount every so often um, to pay a bill. So electricity would generally be kind of um, a bill that you can kind of easily understand about how it's paid. Obviously it has to be paid um, and then you get the um, bill whether you're dealing with uh, Borgosh uh, Energy, David Electricity Network as well and you're paying them every single month. Um, for your electricity um, and depending on how much you use would depend on how much your bill is for. The uh, current account, so a bank draft. A bank draft is a payment on behalf of the account holder that is guaranteed by the bank. So it's a payment on behalf of the account holder. We'll get to this at another time. It's uh, the first four were the main ones I wanted to deal with. Um, these are generally for larger payments. Um, if you're paying um, a large amount of money, um, it's guaranteed by the bank. We'll get to it another time. Um, and an overdraft is permission to withdraw 
more money from a car co current account than is in the account up to an agreed limit. So it's permission for you to pay more money from your current account than you actually have. So let's just say that I have a current account and I have 50 euro in my current account and suddenly I have an electricity bill and my electricity bill is due and I need to pay my electricity bill but my electricity bill is going to cost me 70 euro but I only have 50 euro in my current account for some companies that offer current accounts they can allow um, an overdraft on the current account um, not all of them but some of them can um, so for that current account set up here I'll have to get something called an overdraft I only have 50 euro on my account and I have to pay a bill that costs 70 euro therefore I am short 20 euro what happens is the bank pays the 20 euro and now if I look at my bank account after the 70 has been paid instead of having 50 euro I now have minus 20 because I lost, I lost 50 euro from my savings and now I'm, my bank account balance is actually minus 20 I owe the bank 20 euro so that's what an overdraft is again we're going to get to these two at a later date um, so we'll be moving on to borrowing before I move on to borrowing I have something I want to go through first about setting up a bank account